guess all this just comes down to I will give some books a chance especially if it does have some underpinnings I enjoy but I have to get back you know basically past the hurdle of you know the instant dislike because the genre miscategorization is really making things tough for superhero pros to actually grow beyond you know a sub niche kind of project where it, there's a lot of really good superhero pro stuff out there it's just it, it gets buried and it, part of me just did, finds that extremely disappointing because I want that genre to be just as popular say as even space opera and of space opera a subsection of sci-fi even space opera isn't as popular as it used to be unless it's backed by um, traditional media like you know the expanse and everything handful of stuff will get out to the forefront but that just m makes me even more stubborn like I you know what I'll keep going through the wasteland of YA ab books and other erotica bullshit to try to find stories that actually want to tell a story I get that, yeah, erotica does tickle some people's fancy. I get that. But I also am the type of person that I want my side of things to be fed to, not just what is being latched onto as the next gold rush. Because it really, lit RPG did become a big gold rush for a lot of people. But now it's just so prevalent that, like, what do you do if you have a legitimately fun story to tell? to get past all the the uh, I'm banging a monster girl type setup books because that of lit RPG I've seen an overabundance of that like uh, the X, not the X hero thing by by Kleins but there's another eh, what was it X gods or something and it's a superhero harem and I'm like oh god no See, because I guess harems, the harem setups also remind me of romance triangles, and I apps that if there's one trope I wish I could take a shotgun to and shoot it until it doesn't exist anymore, it's romance triangles. It's like have your main character pick one person, don't have them waffle between multiple people, or or, or like Anita Blake degrade a bunch of people into sleeping with you. Because Anita Blake is pretty much Twitter personified. It really is. Not gonna lie. That is my 100% observation right there, is Anita Blake is Twitter. Pretty much. And it's sickening. Ugh. But, to carry on with other stuff, I have... I just wish there was a way that they would just fix their system. I mean, it can't be that hard to program, can it? Just plop in a few more genres and then basically shuffle everybody over based on keywords. It's again, because people who love harems, they're getting fed every day by tons of ghostwriters in other popular series, you know, as far as... But it makes me wonder... How popular is it really, or is it like you know uh, basically super groups that get together with maybe say fifty to a hundred people? They all time it to where they buy it all at once, and then it it makes the thing climb up in the ranks. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case too either. You know, it's like just make it re easier for us regular readers to get through and find what we want instead of an endless dog pile of. Like, okay, this is sand I'm not really interested in. Oh, wait, there's the diamond. Let me go grab it. And, you know, because, it, it, again, I've spent hours and hours on days off sometimes just looking to see how stuff works. Because eventually I am going to put Uplift Protocol on Amazon. Or maybe I, I might even put it up on another website besides the blog at some point. Because uh, if the genre saturation or o over miscategorization keeps happening and if it doesn't course correct I'm gonna look into other you know ways I can launch this series later and again I'm not even gonna price gouge people I'm gonna be like you know what I'm a newbie writer no nope, not too many people have heard of me so probably when each season omnibus gets ready to be put out I'll probably put like a 2.99 price tag 
It's like, give me a couple cup of coffee. That, that's all I really wish for as a hobby writer. I don't need to be like constantly outputting tons of stuff to make a legitimate living because I use my actual job for that, you know, to pay bills and everything. But again, as a reader, it is absolutely heartbreaking to try to go through and find stuff you want when everybody and their brother that enjoys I guess erotica and other things it's like the the whole world's your oyster you got plenty to choose from why the hell are you butting into my genres to where I can't find what I want anymore it's just ridiculous and I basically figured out yeah that that Simon Archer guy three to seven books a month so yeah, he has to have ghost writers. Um, I guess that's another problem with how Amazon sets up this thing. Like, in order to maintain a certain quota of money, I guess per month, most of the bigger uh, indies probably have a team up of like two to four writers minimum, and they probably output a ton like this guy does with either with known co-writers or with ghost writers so that's also what's burying actual superhero pros under an unending pile of harem and erotica and other things that i am genuinely 100 percent not interested in even even grittier stuff like god it's like my kingdom just to get away from all that stuff i mean I'm guessing maybe I should just do it like once a week where I'll look through and see if I can spot anybody, you know, doing more su super gruesome stuff. But it's a hell of a thing to dig through all of Amazon. It really is. It, and I can see why so many readers will give up and they might just end up going back and rereading old favorites. The, the temptation is there. And I guess in a way it mirrors some stuff in Trad Pub where they're only bet on people that'll be 100% 100 sure bet to get like a bestseller somehow. Uh, I guess there, yeah, there's, there's both pluses and minuses to everything. But what do I know? I'm just one reader on the internet. Have a good day, people.